Chris of Santiago of MMA Islands. Today we have on the 26-year-old phenom, the Lone Star Kid himself, Landry Ward. Landry, how's it going today? Let's go. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm doing good, man. How are you? I, I'm doing swell, man. How's that everything been over there in Florida at this time of year? Uh, it's been good. You know, uh, I went back to Texas for a little bit, probably like three or four weeks ago, and it was uh, nice and cold. Came back to Florida, nice and hot. So <laughs> not much winter going on down here. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you're not mass, um, missing the Texas weather over here, right? Uh, sometimes it's nice to have seasons, you know, go back and get a taste of it. I don't mind the cold, but no, I don't, I don't complain about the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you make the move from uh, from Fort Worth to Florida? Uh, I think I moved down here a little over three years ago, maybe like three and a half years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. What yeah, were so it's been a little while. What were the most difficult adjustments, I guess, you know, from going to Texas to the beaches over there? <laughs> uh, I mean, really just being away from my close friends and family, you know, like just packing up and leaving your family, you know, that's a hard thing to do. But uh, I moved down here with my coach that I started with, uh, his name is Peter Navarro. So I was moving with, with family, uh, you know, he's he's pretty much a brother to me. so. It really wasn't too hard to make that move. You know, I I was with a good person moving down here. So him and his wife were like family to me. So it was really easy to make the adjustment. Mm -hmm. And I know you, uh, you know, you really want to fight in Texas again. Your last five fights have been in Miami. Uh, what has the experience been like fighting in Miami instead of your home state? Because I, I know you did for a little bit at XKO, the regional promotion over here. Yeah, so uh, buying the XKO back in Texas was a lot of fun. You know, they're good promotion. I like the Boosies. They're good good guys. And, I, you know, that's my hometown. So I'd sell out crowds, have a lot of people there cheering for me, and I love the energy. And then my fights in Miami have actually been uh, without fans. So doing it in the closed area, there's just, like, just people there working. Uh, the last, like, two fights, I think they had, like, a little – uh stadium uh stadium seating but it was only like or bleachers it was only like 20 people but uh yeah it's it's definitely a weird adjustment going going from what i'm used to in texas to going to the no fans but uh i mean it is what it is got to make the adaptation and go get go get the job done mm -hmm. i definitely miss fighting in front of fans mm -hmm. yeah for sure for sure and you know, speaking of fans, you know, there's going to be a lot of people at UFC San Antonio. Uh, I saw that you were campaigning for that. Uh, what would it mean for you to fight, to make your debut at UFC San Antonio? And yeah, just making my debut in Texas would mean everything. Whether it ends up being there in March or it ends up somehow lining up that it's at uh, American Airlines Center in Dallas. Just making that debut, making that debut in Texas would be, I mean, everything you know I, I put everything into this game so to be able to go back home and put on a show in front of my fans and make a make a debut statement that I get goosebumps thinking about it because I you know I can't wait to make it happen wherever the debut is it's going to be special and I'm going to put on a hell of a performance but that would just be the icing on the cake to have it happen in Texas Mm -hmm. After your last two performances, do you feel like you're kind of on the brink of getting signed, or do you feel like you might have to even take up a like a short notice uh, fight to you know if somebody falls out in the UFC? No, yeah, I definitely think coming off those last two, like especially my last my last one in particular, I think I showed that I'm ready. Um, and it it would probably have to be if it's UFC, it probably have to be short notice call. You know how how it usually goes with them uh, calling new talent up. But uh, if not, you know, I don't mind taking one more outside with another promotion and then getting the call after that is what it is. It's, you know, it's the business. So if I got to, if I got to go make another statement, I'll go make another statement. Mm -hmm. I saw that uh, on Instagram, you posted a video of your opponents before and after they fight to you like uh <laughs> At the end of the video, I'm like, dang, this guy's like a serial killer or something like, because they're so bloody. Uh, like, what, what do you think of that in terms of, like, how do you deal that much damage to your opponents? Because that, that's something that we don't see from every prospect on the regional scene. I mean, that's what we get paid to do. That's what the fans write. Uh, you know, I say, I say it 
I say it a decent bit in my posts. I give the people what they want. You know, they want stand up fighting. They want, you know, fun fights. And I feel I delivered that. You know, Cubs Swanson used to say beautiful destruction. And I think I'm the new era of beautiful destruction. And, you know, I can't wait till I can show it on, on a big stage. It's just a little glimpse what you see on that video. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a big part of what you do too is branding. You know, you got the, the, Shirt, you got the hat. Not a lot of fighters do that nowadays, especially on the regional scene. But how important is it for fighters to have a brand? I mean, I think it's everything in the fight game. You know, so like the fight game is self promotion. You know, when you get you want sponsorships, and those sponsorships have to be on your fight shorts. You know, you're you're representing them as your person. So why not represent yourself? You know, as you're representing these other companies that are helping you. The fight game is self promotion. You know, I would. I kind of started fighting as McGregor was making his, you know, rise. And I think he kind of showed that if you want to make money in this game, you got to be a hell of a self promoter. And I kind of, you know, bit off a little bit of that. Um, took what I needed to take from that and uh, kind of adapted this. So now I got my branding, got merch, LoneStarKid.com. Y'all go check it out. Got a lot of different clothing on there. Uh, plenty more to come. And I got a lot of big ideas that I'm going to do with my brand and my logo. I just, uh, you know, got to, got to get those fights, get more recognition, get some more money in my pocket. And I got some big things planned down the line with this. Mm -hmm. And earlier you told me that, uh, clouds, uh, closed mouths don't get fed. So like when, you know, should you get to the UFC? When do you get to the UFC? Do you feel like you might have to change a bit of your character to get the bigger fights, the bigger money, like, you know, Colby Covington or Conor McGregor like that? Yeah, maybe not so much as like a changing a character, just a little more, a little more vocal, you know. Uh, those mouths don't get fed. The UFC is definitely showing you that here. They'll uh, they'll take a guy from rank like ten, who's a fun guy, talking a lot of shit, and they'll bring him up and put him over a number five guy or whatever. So, you know, you got to be entertaining. You got to open your mouth a little bit, but maybe not so much changing a character per se, just just being a little more vocal, stating what you want, and. Uh, delivering when you get what you want mm -hmm. what are you uh some of your goals should you get the ufc call like uh you know uh, like uh long-term goals i guess for inside the octagon long-term goals i mean i want to leave a legacy i want to be a champ and you know i want i want to chase records i don't just want to be a guy that made it to the ufc i want to be a guy who made it to the ufc and dominated got a belt and set records and my name gets mentioned way down the line with all the greats you know i don't i don't just want to take part i want to uh, if you uh if you got small goals and your goal is just to get there then you will get there and that's all you do so i want, want to get there and i want to make waves and i want my name to be talked about long after i'm gone from the sport mm -hmm. i thought for uh for some reason i thought you were going to quote conor mcgregor you said you're going to take part and then i thought you were going to say take oh. over <laughs> uh, but what, what you let in with uh was, was funny as well uh I guess another question I had for you is how hard has it been to get a fight since uh, last Halloween since, since you fought? Has it been hard getting a fight or do you kind of just take this time to really make those improvements inside your game? Uh, just taking the taking the time to improve and kind of decide, you know, what I want to do in the future. You know, I, just, I ended a four fight contract with Combate uh, in that last fight. So... I've just been taking this time to develop and get better and kind of sit down with my coaches and my manager and just figure out exactly what the next step's going to be and what we want to do. And I think we're getting close to figuring something out. So hopefully soon I'll have a, I'll have some news that I can drop. I think it'll be. So. Great. Great. Yeah, and in, uh, in, in, in due time. Mm -hmm, for sure. For sure. Then uh, I believe at UFC Houston, uh, I think like a year ago or something, Somebody asked Derek Lewis what the best barbecue place is in Houston. So I got to ask you, what's the best barbecue place over there in the DFW area? Uh, I got to shout out my boys. He needs to sponsor me. I've hit him up like twice. We've gone back and forth a little bit, but I think I just need to get the UFC call, then I'll hop on. Uh, Hurtado Barbecue in Arlington. Hands down, that's the best barbecue I've had uh, over in the DFW. So y'all go check it out. Hurtado Barbecue. I think they got like two or three locations now, but the main location over in Arlington. Fire.
Awesome. Sponsor this man. Sponsor this man for sure. Yeah, for um, real. <laughs> I think that's all the questions I had for you, Landry. I just want to thank you again for the time. Uh, is there anything that you want to say to the fans out there watching? I uh, just want to say uh, there's a new cowboy coming and he's ready to deliver. <laughs> but no, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, you know, I appreciate the exposure. appreciate you taking the time and uh, recognizing recognizing me for the talent. So thank you for the opportunity.